Okay, hi everyone. Uh, let's bring up the desktop. Uh, let's delve straight into Cubase. This second update is for the score editor. Uh, and last time I watched the uh, video back that I've done for you guys on uh, working, you know, as guitar players working with the score editor in Cubase, uh, I left out a load of uh, features and a load of things that a couple of them, frankly, I wasn't aware of either. And so some of you messaged me back saying that they're really helpful. And a couple of you said you should check this out this check this out and check this out uh and i want to i've made a list and i'm going to go through them so if they help other people out then that's really great okay so um what i've done is i've i want to what today i want to go through um i work i still work in cubase 10 uh but for my students and um for um for other clients i like to um provide manuscript sheets and tab sheets especially for students like the tabs um, and chord boxes and you'll be surprised what you can do in in the Cubase score editor but it is a little quirky I have found is a little quirky and there are a few things that uh, there's a few bugs still in, in it as well that need to be ironed out but um, on the whole it's pretty pretty good and pretty useful I want to talk today about um, hiding colours, colours for additional meanings, which means when you move uh, an articulation or you move uh, a note dynamic up and down or something, it changes colour to green. And that used to throw me until I did some research and I found out that you can hide that and you can turn that off. I also want to talk about transposing for guitar. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to talk about creating chord boxes and custom chord names especially believe it or not writing the name c major or a major chord for some reason isn't represented it, they just do it as a c or a d or an f sharp uh, as opposed to saying f sharp major like that um, and i'll show you how you can enter your own custom one um, and save that as well i want to talk about creating slash chords as well uh, that's in the chord box itself and horizontal chord boxes adding in uh, little cheeks or chicks percussive notes into your notation adding in tuplets uh, groups of five six and seven um, changing keys I want to talk about the auto quantize feature and I want to talk about voices as well uh, which may be useful for pianists as well for uh, not just guitar players, but for other musicians that are looking to simplify their manuscript and their notation by using the voices feature, as opposed to having the split. <clears throat> and there's there's different um, things that you can do in there, where you can have it just single stave, split stave, or polyphonic. So I want to talk about that as well. Um, so without further ado, let's let's go straight in. Um, I want to bring up the first, I want to go to edit, and I want to go to preferences, and I want to bring up in scores here, and in editing, um, there's show colours for additional meanings, uh, bear with me while I find it, <laughs> uh, there you go, that one, okay, um, And what what I, what I you can actually do is make them active like that by clicking on them, and then when you move a note or you do something that's not meant to, or it's out of kilter, it changes colour. I can see why it would be useful, but for me it's completely redundant, and so I I, I have them unchecked all the time, um, which means I've got complete control over having them in black when I need to move things around. You'll see why, especially for strumming patterns. Okay, so that's that solved that issue for me where you had the colours popping up in the last video. Okay, the next option I want to look at is when we actually go into... Now what I've done here is I've written a simple guitar line uh, in Elydian um, or, um, or you know, B major from E to E. Um, and I've what I, what I do is I duplicate it. So I hold down the Alt button and I'll drag that and I'll duplicate it like so okay 
onto that track. And this track is one of my template. This is one of my template folders that I have set up. Uh, just just running um, easy keys at the moment. And um, and I at the bottom one there, I have that set to tablature mode in here. And on that one, I have set to manuscript. So when I lasso the both of them and control an R, I get presented with this, um, you know, um, um, this feature. Let me just um, see if I can set up Rear Stream to send that through to you. Okay. There you go. Okay, so. Um, Another thing is I have to be careful with Restream, which is from um, the guys that do Reaper. They have a thing called the rear plugs, and it's it's great to use, but for some reason in Cubase, as opposed to using it in Reaper, it really can be a bit buggy. So um, I really try and keep um, that. I won't turn that off until I finish the video because I just know that if I... If I remove it or change anything, it will crash. There is a fix around that I found. If I bring that up, if you set it to receive rather than send, you can close off the plugin and it won't crash. Uh, so that's a little workaround there if that, that helps anyone out there. Because this is being sent straight to um, OBS. Anyway, so the next thing I want to talk about is to transpose. Um, now, if you want to bring up the settings, you can go to Scores and Settings, and that will bring up the window. Um, but if you want to bring up the, the settings, you can click this little bar, this black bar here, and double-click, and it will bring it up. Now, it won't double-click if you go to Preferences and you have a setting in here. Um, double-click on Staff flips between Full Score and Part. And if you enable that, it will switch. You double click, it will switch just to the score that on its own. That one, and double click again, it will bring every all the ones back in. Okay, I don't like that feature personally, so I just I leave it off because I like to be able to edit like that. And another cool thing to bear in mind is that once you've done um, once you've done one box. Don't forget that you don't have to go back in into other and create a new guitar symbol. You can just hold down the alt and keep on creating. And then when you double click that, up pops the chord box. I do wish they'd make it a little bit bigger. Dear, dear Steinberg, <laughs> um, I do wish they'd make it a little bit easier to, to look at. But if anyone has any ideas about how to make that bigger in here, then let me know. Okay, um, and obviously if you want that horizontal, then you can do that and increase the frets. But there you go, that'll be the new shape that's just popped up there. Likewise, you can do the same with names, with um, with chord symbols. Uh, but I don't want to talk about that just yet, because in the chord symbols, I want to talk about doing custom chord names for that as well. Okay, so I'm just going to move these boxes out of the way. And what I've got here is... Um, if I go and turn off um, this option here, polyphonic, and set it to single, that's what you'll be faced with when you write something in um, Cubase. And uh, to be frank, it's quite annoying. Um, and for a while, I couldn't figure out how best to do it. I thought, well, maybe you need to do it in split or something. But it's the polyphonic feature that you want. And if you're only working with one stave, then you can have a maximum of four voices per stave. Um, there are obviously things about taking rests and whether you want the rests to be shown or reducing, then they can do that there. But um, by setting it to polyphonic, what happens is that every single part then gets its own bit. So every single part, if I created another part here, um, if I duplicated this line, just this first line here, and I'm just using Alt and bringing the notes down, 
Mm. There you go. And and I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit quieter. Um, so I'm just going to handle just that down a little bit, just to give you sort of a, a doubling line. And if you imagine that's the open E string on your guitar. Okay, so if I go in now, um, I'm going to copy this and paste it at this point so that it's it's in the tab as well. Okay. Um, now, you'll see that they're joined together, but because I've enabled polyphonic in staff mode, I could probably add another third voice and nothing will happen at the start. But if I highlight these notes mm. and I can right click them and move to voice. And if I do it to the third voice, you'll notice they'll now separate. Okay. That's, it's not really something um, that's guitar specific, but um, it's quite useful to know if you want to separate the voices up. Okay, so um, likewise here, if you have a, a note that has two, like that, uh, like you've got a high B there, and and you've got a, um, a B there, you may want to move that. Rather than do individual note moving, if you know that there's quite a lot of group quite a lot of notes that could be grouped together then highlight them let's just take these two for instance and then right click and then select to previous string and then you'll have an octave more in keeping with guitar sort of things um, now if, if I go back here and I move these back I can what I, I think I can, what I can do is I can group these with a beam and they'll be beamed together. But what I can do is I can change these voicings um, to the second voice, and then they'll be linked to the bass line there. Okay, or I can move them to the first voice, and they'll be tied together like an octave. Okay, so that is, that's quite an important thing if you're notating, and you want to clean things up so they don't look so crazy. Um, and, and um, don't forget, you can get multiple lines and then move them to previous string and then it will move them all at once. That's a bit of a time saver I've found for me. It's a very big time saver in order to do like that amount of note shifting. Um, sometimes you get that kind of thing and you want to you want to move it to, okay, you can move it to a new string. Uh, let's say the third. Um, but you'd really, if you were working in octaves, guitar players, we would really want to do that. We would, you would sort of play it like that, and um, and that would be the previous string as well. So, <clears throat> okay, and that would be a G sharp. So I'd move that really to the second string. And I'd move that one to the fourth. Okay, uh, that's that's how I work in tablature. I, I, the the multi-voice feature was a big one for me because it's changed a lot of things. Um, and you can move these up and down using the bar handles as well. Sometimes if you've got stems and you want to put chord boxes on the top, for example, uh, I may want to put something like that. I know it's not st with the chord, don't panic, but maybe you want to have it like that. And then um, there may not be, it may run out of room because of the way that the, um, the staves are. Well, you can change the orientation if you want them to all be down or all set to up. You can go into right click once you've selected some notes right click and select properties and you can change the stem so they can both be up obviously that doesn't work or, or auto <clears throat> another useful thing okay um, what's next okay so transpose for guitar 
This is another biggie for me. If you go to the main menu, you'll see Display Transpose here. And if you click the, the little black box here, anywhere here, it will bring up a list of instruments. Now right at the bottom is 12 because it, everything's, everything's um, 8VA. Everything's an octave higher than written. Um, and so that's important to do that. Or as they say, ottava in Italian. I think that's the correct term for an octave. Um, so that, that's quite a useful thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, move this out of the way. And in actual fact, I'm going to delete it a lot. And I want us to look at um, doing a, a 16th note funk rhythm, okay? And I want to just look at notating that because um, this is the next thing we really want to do with uh, funk rhythms and creating these percu percussive notes. Okay, so um, let's find a little, let's make up a little 16th note. We'll set our quantize to 16th. Let's get a little 16th note right up here. Um, Okay, just a little, just a. This is really just a quick example, uh, a little two-bar phrase, and I'm now gonna stretch this up, resize it, sorry, and then I'm gonna lasso by left-clicking, Control and R, and automatically, what I want to do is I want to um, Put some chick notes in there. Put some percussive things where we hold, where we're muting the strings with the left hand, and so I'm going to work on that. And when I want the chick notes to be, I'm going to make them. In the places like that okay so they can't be heard but but they can be seen and they'll be notated okay now in here what I do is if I want them to be a percussive note then first of all these all need to be a string down okay so as you can see I've highlighted them and I'm going to right click and I'm going to move note to previous string Right, and this one as well. Okay, so a little funky ditty, but um, what I want to do with this is if I go into properties, I can change the note head and then apply, and that will turn that into a little sort of chick. I can do the same here as well. Uh, if we wanted to do multiple chords, then we could uh, we could do the same thing. We can change the note heads by lassoing them and changing the note heads, and that was that was. Uh, So I'll guess again I'll right click go to properties and do that. Now if I if there's something in the way that I don't like, I'll just hide and show it and that'll get rid of that rest. And there's another one there as well.
Okay. And obviously we can move that wherever we want it to make the stave look nice and neat. Um, so that that is how you do percussion sort of I call them chicks um, little percussives like a sort of a skank thing where you get a you keep the 16th note hand going one e and a two e and a three e and a but you you only you use left hand muting to get those notes to sound okay and that's how I, the approach I would do for that okay the next thing I want to look at is I'm going to move this way out of the way but the next thing I want to look at is chord boxes and what I'm going to do is show you how to put your own custom chord names in okay so I'm just going to get a C major as we would see it as a guitar player would see it interval wise in an open position Put a bit of syncopation in here to make it sound nice. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to add a bit of dynamics just so it doesn't sound too MIDI. Okay, let's have a listen to this lovely C major chord. Okay, and now I'm going to duplicate this and get into my score editor. Okay, so let's move these bars out of the way. They're not needed right now. And I'm going to show you little things that you can do here with chord boxes. Okay, and I'm just going to reset the polyphonic to single. There you go. Now, say for instance I'm low on space, I might want these note heads stems to be the other way around, like that. That will free up for me to write. I'm just going to bring a chord box up here. You could do this by actually clicking that as well. Here's another little tip that, um, that might be useful for you guys is if you click the guitar symbol, you can keep on adding without having to go back and click each time. That is a setting in Cubase. You have to click the object selection to get out of that. <clears throat> and I'll show you the setting that, that toggles between that. And that is in preferences. And it's display object selection tool after inserting symbol. So if I tick that and click OK, I click this once, I can now draw my, as soon as I put my chord box in, it now goes back to the selection tool. Handy, if you want, if you like working that way, that's great. I personally like to manually do it so that I can chop in a load of, um, let me just get some note symbols up. Say for instance, I've got quite a lot of downstrokes or upstrokes then uh, I may want to add down, up, 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 down, up. And you see I've now got to go back and click that again to add the other note. And if you're doing that quite a lot, um, then that can be an issue. Um, you, you can hold down the Alt button and duplicate to get things like that. Um, that's kind of just how I like to work, so I really much prefer, um, let's get the preferences up and let's get rid of that. Okay. Also in here, don't forget you can set the default number of bars per staff. That is also available in advanced layout and number of bars in the settings menu. Um, right, so <clears throat> what I want to show you now is how to create your own chord names. So we're going to move down to other and we're going to go to chord symbol and I'm going to plot that out and because I'm only using one I'm now going to select the object selection tool. Now let's say I want to want to call that C major. You can see it does not show up. It only shows C. Now I worry that might confuse some um, beginning 
guitar players or people that are just really want to display C major, okay? So what you can do is you can actually type in here. Once you're done, you can actually store, as you'll see, I've done it before, but you can actually store presets. So if I wanted to have a uh, major six, nine, sharp 11, boom. Now, if you didn't want to put a chord symbol in and you didn't want to do that, you could equally just do this. <clears throat> and then once you've finished, <clears throat> right click and set font and do it that way. That's absolutely fine if you want to work that way. I think that's one of the, the redeeming features about Cubase is that there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, sorry for the cats out there. I love cats and I don't skin cats regularly, I promise. Um, so, if we switch to C major, we've then there, but we could actually add C major and then store that. And then we'd have C major. Okay, it might be a small thing, but to some people who are not uh, au fait with the chord editor and the, the score editor, then that might be good. Another thing I want to show you is aligning elements. Okay. Um, I'm just going to make a note of this in my uh, thing to make sure I get through everything. Um, and aligning elements is, is a really useful feature because there's, there's not really a snap <clears throat> feature in, um, in Cubase. So I'm just going through and making a note of all the things I've done and all the things I haven't done at the moment. Okay, we have touched on star on, on voices. Um, and so I'm going to put that at the back there. If there's anything I've shown you that you're not up with, then just message me. You can contact me at, um, on this channel uh, by replying in the comment section below. Or you can uh, message me or go to my website, steveforward.com. Right, so um, let's just get rid of a few of these features. Now, let's say, for instance, we've been creating quite a lot of... Imagine they're all different chords here. And, I've, and they're all over the place like this. I might want these <clears throat> to be all in one line. I'm going to put I'm going to dot these about the place like this. I might want all these C majors to be in one line. What we do is we highlight these. Uh, make sure you only deal with one thing at a time otherwise it will put all of them uh, in the I'll show you what I mean in a minute and go to scores, align elements and center vertically. That will then put these in a nice neat line. <clears throat> Similarly, if you do the same for align elements, center vertically. I'm now in a position to, to lasso them all and put them in there. And they're neatly arranged now. Okay, for if I want to move them and adjust them, then I can. And then once again, lasso and align elements and center vertically. Okay. Similarly, you can do the same for note symbols if you want to do the down ups, etc. If I'm going to make this like a strumming rhythm pattern, then it should be. Uh, let's just move these up a little bit. I want to put the note, the strumming patterns on here. So in this part. Okay. So down, up, 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 down, up. Okay. We'll put that, we'll get rid of that one. So, and then the next one will be upstrokes. Like that. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of these notes and move these down in case we need them later on down here. Later on. As you can tell, I'm a little bit of an, a Cockney accent there, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> don't forget double clicking bar lines gives you loads of options as well if you're doing many phrases to demonstrate a technique or various rhythms then adding these at the end makes them good and also don't forget that you can actually resize if you want to actually add some um, some text in here so like this rhythm part here um, 
and then obviously if it's too big or too small or you want to change it then set your font like that and that can be useful when you're doing sort of articles or you're doing lesson planning things okay so let me just get that back again and we've got our strumming there but let's say we want to move this down there or anywhere else you'll notice that because we've removed the um, colors for additional meanings option in the preferences here we've taken them all off from being active we could have them all on if we check them like that but we really don't want to have them on unless you want to work with some se severe layers you know um, and that sort of chart would allow me to there you go and if we ever listen to that quickly it's not going to be fun guitarists put your fingers in your ears <laughs> okay and if you want to put a repeat mark in there because it's a short phrase then that's we can now let's say we let's let me what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all of this and I'm going to remove the little Lydian phrase here and in the next one I'm going to change key okay in the next part and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be in the key of F which has one flat in it and I'm going to um, just do a nice agonizing op barred position um, If I want to duplicate, I can control and D. Okay, there's a little bit of syncopation happening here over the beat, and I'm just going to get some dynamics so it isn't as painful. There you go. And so this is a straight ahead uh, F major voiced chord for guitar. Okay. Once again, I want to give it some tab as well, so I'll, I'll just alt and drag. And then I'll select the lot and go in, and we can see that number two is there. I want to move my bar, so it's just over there. Incidentally, you can adjust the bar line, uh, the bar numbering, where you want it to be. But let's deal with this first. Okay, so now I want all the notes, all the stems to be pointing downwards. So I right-click after highlighting them and properties and down. Okay, but now I want to add a new key. So what, one of the things I can do is go into settings and change the key here. But that will do it for all the, the, of the, um, the whole thing. Okay, we don't want to do that. So let's go to keys here and let's find F major and then pop it there. Now you'll notice that it shows, almost preempts a key change in there. We have an option to either right click and hide it. Okay. Or we can pop the key in. And I think Cubase is going to do one of its amazingly right and we can hide or show it I prefer to just hide it but there is a setting let me show you the setting uh, in scores and settings under layout under projects I think and under keys Warnings for new keys at line breaks. Just untick that and that will do it the same. I keep that on there because sometimes I do some violin scores for people and um, for some reason violin players like to know the key changes So be before a bar happens. Um, so 
that's a useful thing. Now I want to show, uh, where were we? We want to show how to do, um, a key change. We've done that there. Okay, guys, that is it. That's changing keys. Let's move on to the next one. Creating slash chords. Let's give you an example. Let's now change the chord so that it is uh, C over F. Okay. And so that's kind of going to be a second inversion F major. All right. When we do our chord shape, let me just copy this down here. When we do our chord shape, in here we can double click and edit this um, shape and double single click that and that there and that's our shape but now we want to make it say F with the bass note C Bear in mind, we can still use one of our presets and F major over C. There you go. Okay. And that is how you do slash chords. Horizontal chord boxes, we've looked at adding in cheap percussive notes, we've done. Adding in tuplets, groups of five, six, and seven, and the auto quantize feature. They're the last two things I want to deal with in this tutorial. Okay. Um, so adding in tuplets of five, six and seven all right so we're going to create another bar here and we're going to do in the key editor and we're going to start off with um four sixteenths and now i might want to put a bar of five quintuplets in there i think they're called um so what I'm going to do, I'm going to E to open the quantize panel, and I'm going to select tuplet five, but for eighth notes. No, but for quarter notes. There you go. Sorry, I got it wrong. There you go. Okay, so a five let in your using a quarter note, and we can we can actually um, save that. There you go, and that's now saved. And if we do the same for seven or six, save, save, and we could we could actually do a tuplet for eight as well if we need to. Okay, so now they're saved in here, and they'll bring us up perfect every time. So now I can go five, and now I can do six, six tuplets, and then seven okay let's let's duplicate that uh, yeah okay we don't need really need to let's just let's let's do it anyway okay okay now we're gonna see I'm glad this has come done this because um, sometimes it comes up with um, glitches and uh, the quantize takes over so where was the one that had five we go to the five that one had a group of five in okay I'm just look back and I'm gonna go back in Well, you can see this one here hasn't quite quantized correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this bar line, bring up the system properties for it. And now I'm going to go to main, but I'm going to select auto quantize. I'm also going to set the notes to 30 seconds. But when I select, look at the pop up that says mix normal and triplets. Okay, so now we've got a fighting chance of actually putting our quintuplets, etc. in there. So if we lasso that and 
quintuplet and then select quantize uh, whoops in here <laughs> set the quantize we should get our group of five up let me try that again right click and iterative quantize let's try this again had this all worked out today it's the last one guys I want to just get five six and sevens done and that that should help you guys out a bit further so um, I don't think it's in properties but I do think it's here um, Okay, that's what I've done before, so it should work. Okay. You're probably going, it's over there, it's over there. <laughs> but I want to. We enter our tuplet, basically, the presets that we've done, and then we assign them in there. And it should allow us to do this. Okay. I think I just cracked that. And now in the settings, what we want to do is let's find the actual setting for it. I'm pretty sure it's a quantize issue, guys. So I'm just going to do groups of five because that's how I set it up before. It should be the quantize, really, but. Uh... Should let me quantize it. What am I doing here? Oh, I think it's a. Um, oh, I think I know. All day I had this done today, and then when I come to record, I'm going to leave this on there because you can watch me sweat over this and have a good chuckle, guys. Um, There's a setting for tuplets here that I saw earlier. But what I'm really after is a w I've done it before, so I know it works. Um, but I need to bring up the quantize panel. 
Uh, and I know it was very, very simple how I'd done it before. Uh, so I'm kicking myself now. Let me find it. And build an end tuplet. That's the one. Okay. There you go. So it was uh, in scores and build an end tuplet. And then if I do the same here, and then the same here. But this one is going to be a group of six. Um, and this one was a group of, group of seven. So I'm just going to go back here. This one was a group of seven. Uh, there. And that one. And this was a group of five. And this is a sex tablet there. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group that as a group of six. There you go. And that one. Okay, we got there in the end, folks. All right, so um it's this auto quantize panel here. that allows you to mix normal and triplets. If I take that off, it it can go back, okay? It can switch back. So you wanna have that on. Um, and the quantize panel, you can set up for the key editor. And then when you're working with scores, you can build in tuplets. You can also put some text in there if you need to as well. All right, the nested tuplets error message is something that I haven't looked into much, but this uh, this lesson is kind of a follow on and an update to um, the previous Cubase tutorial that I done. Okay, if you've got any questions, then let me know about that. Um, and I hope this has been a bit useful. As I say, this lesson, this sort of tutorial is mainly for um, guitar players who are looking to do rhythm charts and chord charts for students or for any other video tutorials and they want to just delve straight in. They don't have to fil filter through the manual for ages trying to find what they need because a lot of this stuff is quite hidden in Cubase. Um, uh, as for um, bar handles and things like that um, and then the hidden notes and hidden things. Um, there's quite a lot of functions and things in here as well, like for enharmonics, if you want to do an enharmonic shift. But mainly I, I, I work from a standpoint of um, wanting to show um, the traditional music notation and the tablature, but also the chord box. Uh, what I usually have done in the past is have a third one that just shows the rhythm. Uh, if I wanted to do that, what I could do is um, duplicate that track and just call this the rhythm notation. This is a feature that's only in um, Cubase 10, I believe now. Um, and if I go in there, you'll see three three staves linked together. I'll just uh, group these down a little bit. Okay. Now I only want to have number of bars one, okay. And so for this one, at the bottom here, I may want to show rhythmic notation, okay. And also I may want to have as the drum, okay. And you can do the same. With here, so I'm, what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to bring up the properties, and I'm going to turn off tablature mode, and there we will have our rhythm only. Okay, which is quite quite handy. Then then you've got the strumming patterns, uh, the rhythm patterns, etc. etc. Um, 
and everything can be um right and everything can be shown quite clearly okay guys all right so as i say over the years i've tended not to use this third section because the rhythm itself is displayed in the traditional music notation anyway and i'd much prefer people to learn about notation and tablature as opposed to three things and it can be a bit unwieldy as well uh, having three staves in there um, okay so I'm just gonna one of the lovely features about Cubase is is you get to undo as much as you want and there we are we're back to normal okay so I hope this tutorial has been useful I, I really wanted to talk about the um, hiding additional colors for meanings and I wanted to show you how you could enter your own custom chord names in here uh, and a couple of other tricks and talking about voices as well polyphonic and split mode tuning uh, notation display sorry and aligning elements as well We created slash chords and we added in cheek percussive notes and adding in tuplets finally in groups of five, six, and seven. Sorry, guys. Um, and the auto quantize button. Those things should add on to a little bit of nice um, additional um, uses for you when you're doing your scores in the Cubase score editor. Okay, if you've got any questions or comments, then leave them below. And I hope that has been useful for you guys. Thank you very much indeed. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll be seeing you soon. Cheers, bye.